everybody. Welcome to the Aloha Monkey uh, Shortcast podcast. We're the Shortcast. Uh, this will be our first one. It's uh, about, uh, the podcast is basically about musicians from the area that Aloha Monkey has met along the way, and uh, you know, just to let you know who we are and where we're going and what's happening with uh, Aloha Monkey and our friends. So um, at this time, we're trying to uh, get. We're going to be getting people. To come in and talk to us and tell us about where they're from, where where they started to play, and what their inspirations were. Maybe if they've got, uh, we have some people lined up that have just released CDs, mm -hmm. and they're going to be talking uh, with us. Uh, we're going to be backing them up. It's in some of the, some of the uh, podcasts, and uh, that's basically where we're at. So if you have any questions, you can write to us on info at alohamonkeyband.com, and uh, we'll get your questions answered on online. We're expecting this one, this podcast, to be released on September first, and we're going to try and do them every two weeks to get them out. But uh, that's where we're at right now. So aloha and let the show begin. Aloha. Hey, we're sponsored by the No Knot Necklace Carrier. Are you tired of ruining your necklaces with knots and kinks? The No Knot Necklace Carrier keeps your jewelry tangle free and organized. An attractive, easy to pack carrier. It's perfect for travel, home, and available for under twenty dollars. Check out KnowNotNecklace.com for your links to Amazon, Walmart, and other online retailers. The No Knot Necklace Carrier. Don't get twisted. Hello everybody and aloha. Uh, today we're going to be talking to Aloha Monkey Band, us. We're going to talk about us and uh, where we all started. So the band started, uh, I have Adam Lewis here and Scott Savage and my name is Bob Kuhn. Aloha everybody. Aloha with the English team. <laughs> That's right. And uh, we started, Adam and I met at, uh, at a job that we yeah. had. We don't want to mention any names. The 2005. Five. Yeah. And uh, he had been with a group that were playing every Sunday yeah. that I went over to meet, and that didn't work out so good. <laughs> so then we decided to put something new together. And uh, that's when we, we brought in uh, Pete Belarchek. You know, I was playing, actually I was playing bass in that group. I, I don't know what you were playing in that group. It wasn't, it wasn't very... Um, Did you wear the, your shoes then? The drummer, we, the only way we could wait the drummer up was with a bottle of vodka. He was... <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> And I, you know when you yeah. when you know when you start with a band you, you don't want to go in and uh, and like stomp all over somebody. You nah, know? Nah. So the guitar player, I said I said to him, I said you should really go and ask the guitar player if it's okay if I come because you don't want to just walk in on somebody, you know. Yeah. And he's like, oh, don't worry about it, it'll be no problem. Yeah. So we walked in and this guy comes in and he had an acoustic guitar with him, and he didn't plug it in or play it the whole night. He just ran around. Adam played bass. I played guitar and sang. I'm like, is this guy going to sing? Is he going to do something? Yeah. And he goes, I don't know. And then the drummer fell asleep drunk. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and they wanted to play Eagles. And the drummer was like, I'm not playing any of that bird stuff. And he, <laughs> just, he fell asleep. They had to keep not, oh, it was horrible. So I did that for, what, two, three weeks with you guys. And yeah. I was like, I can't come back to this, Adam. And then that was it. So then we decided. That you said you had another guy you knew. Yeah, but I think the, you know, the guitarist at that time, I think he also recognized that the format wasn't working as well, so he, he kind of was moving on himself to something else. So, uh, but yeah, so we moved uh, we moved on from that and uh, moved to Red Bank. And right. in Red Bank, this is where Aloha Monkey was born. That's right. And um, so yeah, so actually uh, the original format of Aloha Monkey was uh, Bob Kuhn, Adam Lewis, and uh, Pete Belarchek. And a uh, great guy, Pete. And he actually, the funniest thing, we were we started practicing at his house, brought the uh, drums over, we made a studio at his house. And every week, you know, Pete's knocking out and he's playing, we pick the songs to play and he's knocking them out. I didn't, we didn't know that Pete was l actually learning the bass while we were practicing. He wasn't really a musician. I mean, he, that, kudos to him. I, yeah. He picked that thing up. I didn't know. Yeah. He picked I that mean, thing. the songs I picked in the beginning were all just real easy songs so that we could yeah. you know Get but then there, yeah. and actually Pete had a lot to do with the, uh, the song choices after that because then he wanted to play 
these Michael Fronte songs and some yeah. reggae and all kinds of those. It, it was pretty good. Which actually created the different sound. Yeah. Of the Lower Monkey, and you know, and it feeds into the you know the theme of the Lower Monkey. Yeah, you went out with your designer. You got the designer to do the, uh, um, you know, the design of the, the logo. Monkey, which is really cool. That's, right. that's ours. Um, and then the format of the songs that we pick. Uh, I mean, I think Pete had his own uh, his own formula for what? What did he say? He says if uh, if you can, your hips can swing. Yeah, if you swing around the pole. Yeah, uh, swing on the pole. It's good music. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what we want to play. The girls want to swing on the pole. Something like that. It was crazy. But and it was then, fun. Yeah, so we did that. We did that for for um, quite a few years, playing a lot of local places. Actually, uh, the first place where we were the house band for several years was the Walt Street Pub. Right, we're still in, there now. Uh, yeah, we're still there now. And uh, the the old uh, the owner Louis, uh, God bless him, rest his soul. He was right. a really nice man. And um, that brought us fast forward several years. Um, we explored more music. We we came out to Ocean County. And the Pete decided to go on his uh, solo solo trip around New Jersey, playing acoustic, acoustic, which is great. And then we were uh, we were introduced to uh, to Mr. Scott Savage over here through various. Uh, well, we all played with Bad Dog because we were we yeah. were we didn't have a band for a couple of, for a little while. Yep. So Bad Dog, um, when and Adam and I didn't have Pete, we uh, joined up with Bad Dog B Triple A. D, O G, D D D O G, OG yeah. yeah, and um, and then so we met Scott. We went through several bass players over there, and we met Scott. And then uh, Bad Dog became too big, and Scott and I are still playing with them. Uh, and then we decided to put Aloha Monkey back together again for a smaller band and different, just different, yeah. you know. It's the it's 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 different music. It's. Uh you know, all different genres that we play, and uh, harmonies, different types of harmonies, and it's fun, it's, it's really, it's fun music, I, re I love playing in this band, it's, yeah. uh, it's just, uh, it's easy, you know. So anyway, so that's, uh, that's how the concept of Aloha Monkey came by, right? Scott, what do you think, uh, after, I mean, we did the first gig, it was that we got a phone call one day saying, "Hey, we're looking for a three-piece band, and yeah. we're, we're in the middle of Bad Dog." And I'm like, "Guys, can we do this?" And and, it, and it's it's a, I think it's all great because uh, you know, in a larger band setting, it's easier to do more intricate, more complicated, you know, music, yeah. uh, especially with a singer like Lori. Yeah, and Gino, you know, and Gino on uh, keys and and freeze, and it's just it's a different dynamic. Um, you know, I mean, how many bands, I always, I always kid people, how many bands do you see playing, you know, sticks and things like that, Right. Yep. you know, in a, in, in a bar anymore. So, uh, you know, Bad Dog does some really cool deep cuts that, you know, everyone loves. Uh, Aloha Monkey is different. It's, it's, you know, a uh, little beach vibey, you know, little, uh, country. Oh, we saw Bob had a great country voice. Yeah. Thank you. You know, so uh, you know, a little reggae-ish there with uh, with Adam's influences. Uh, so you know, it's a different thing. And with the, and with the trio, you know, uh, it does open up a whole new dynamic because you got to fill fill spaces and such, and and uh, you know, you get to explore uh, what you can't explore in a larger band sometimes. And the great thing, because you're you're so good on the bass, is that it. Um it, you can you can spread out a little bit, yeah. like if you're playing in a, like and sometimes a bad dog, you gotta just lay down the beat. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Because if, yeah. if you get too crazy, yeah, it overlaps on the keys, it overlaps on me and whatever or harmonies. But in this band, there's plenty of room. Yeah, there's plenty of room to explore and and kind of, you know, sometimes you get yourself in trouble and sometimes it just <laughs> turns great, turns out really great. So awesome. you know what though, but if you don't take chances, you never know. I say, I say more drum solos and drum fills in this song works for me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> okay. Uh, next thing I know, they're going to, what's that song that I can't stand that you walk off the stage? Oh, yeah, we, we did that to them. We're going to do Inagata Davida and no, walk off the stage did, for 10 minutes. We, we did One Way Out. One Way Out. And it's a drum solo. We did, Pete and I walked off they stage. Walked off the stage. And I'm going, dit, dit, dit. I'm like, where the hell did these guys go? I see them at the bar having a beer. Like, what the hell? We were laughing. This one. That was uh, fun. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. Wow. 
So that's a little bit about us. So that brings us to uh, the guys in the band. So, um, you know, it was funny. We were talking about doing this podcast. And I, I said, you know, I really don't know where all, everybody got their start. And then Adam started telling me, I said, shut up, save it for the podcast. <laughs> so that's what happened. But uh, it, it's uh, funny because we, we all have different beginnings, you know, since you're the youngest, Adam, yes. and the least amount of experience. Just just, <laughs> just because of your age. Just celebrated my 50th on my car. Yeah, yeah, so right. So you want to tell us about you were in Manchester? You are Manchester, England, I guess. Yes. So, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, yes, originally from Manchester, England, but I'm happy to say a very proud American citizen here. Love America. Um, so, yeah, so it all started um, when I was about eight, nine years old. And um, my father, actually, I grew up in show business. My father was a concert promoter. Um, during my childhood, going to school, I was in all the school plays, school musicals, anything and everything to do with um, the arts I was in. Uh, but most importantly was the, the influence that it had on me um, traveling around to all these live shows when you're eight, nine, ten years old, going backstage with the bands, hanging out with the bands, seeing how they interact behind the scenes, having a backstage pass going out onto the stage before anyone comes in to do a sound check and sitting on the drums and banging the drums in a 20, 30,000 30, seat arena. It's how can that not influence you in music? Um, so my dad, I mean, there's a lot of famous uh, people uh, that I've met. B.B. Um, King, Gladys Knight and the Pip, Smokey Robinson, um, Andy Williams, Andy Williams, I always call him Uncle Andy. I mean, we, we, he stayed with us, we, we hung out with him, we went all over the place with him. Um, even, uh, you, know, you like this one, uh, my dad taught Larry, Larry Hagman, J.R. Ewing. I met him um, when I was a kid as Colonel well. Colonel Nelson, or Major yeah, Nelson. Major Nelson. Nelson. Yeah. <laughs> I dream of dreaming. Yeah, that's right. Major Nelson. <clears throat> but the, I think the most influential for me was, uh, my dad used to tour a band called Shawadi Wadi. If you go on YouTube, you can type the name up, you'll see them all over the place there. Very famous band uh, from England. And Are you he, still around? Uh, it, I mean, you know, Shana Na still exists somewhere in some form. Yeah, they are the equivalent of Shana Na, the Teddy Boy group. Um, I, don't th I don't know if they're still I don't playing. know if Americans know what a Teddy Boy is. I, so, I know only because of the Beatles, but you, you should tell So people. Teddy Boy is like doo -wop. So you have a, a doo -wop band, they all wear those long, multicolored uh, outfits. Like someone wear green, someone wear blue, someone wear red. Very colourful. And they do six part harmonies, seven part harmonies. So it's not like, to see, I'm thinking a teddy boy, to me, when I thought of a teddy boy, yeah. I thought it was like a greaser, like a, a rock, yeah. a, a, like that kind I of thing. Uh, no, that's so, what I Teddy boy in England, um, it, well, whatever Shalana, how they used to dress. And they used to dress the, like the 50s. 50, yeah, exactly. It's yeah. the 50s uh, do what band. So, you know, they were doing um, Under the Moon, uh, Under the Moon, uh, Moon of Love, or whatever the song is, Blue Moon, all these things. He, he, he can't remember it. Sea of Love, uh, Blue Moon. I can't remember the word. Adam killed those brain cells a long time ago. <laughs> he, was on, he was on the road. He was a kid, he was on the road. But the, but the thing is that it, the influence those bands had on me was the harmonies. So, as you, as you know, and if anyone doesn't know, if you, when you listen to the beautiful harmonies of Below a Monkey, it's typically the drummer in the background doing it. <clears throat> So uh, anyway, but that's, that's where I learned to pick up the harmony at different pitches from listening to a six-part live harmony band. I mean, that's... And your sister sings also. Awesome. My sister is a professional singer. She lives in Florida with my parents. And uh, yeah, she does the... You give her uh, a plug. What's her name? Yeah, her name is Alexandra Lewis. Mm -hmm. And uh, you can look her up on... Um, uh, Facebook. Facebook. Uh, if you're down in the Boca Raton area, please. She plays out in all the restaurants down there. Go check her out. Um, and, uh, and my brother also lives in California, and uh, he doesn't play out, but he's a classical guitarist. Really? So, uh, yeah. Actually, when the three of us uh, travel uh, for a reunion, the last time we did it in Boca Raton was years ago, um, but they, they, we did a, like a little mini concert with the three of us playing and singing, and we, we, we got the nickname the Von Lewis family. Oh, um, really? <laughs> you know, so so it's, uh, yeah, it was a lot of fun, but that, that's... My background, grew up in, in the music, um, and obviously my influence is big time is all the British rock from the 60s, 
um, especially the Beatles. How can he not? Did you play in any other bands like uh, like before Aloha Monkey? Uh, no, Aloha Monkey was actually the very first. Well, I don't know if you consider that other band that we mm, played. Garage bands. You played garage, garage bands. Yeah, but uh, no, Aloha Monkey was the first. I was. I did some solo. You know, I played guitar as well and I played some bass and sing and write some songs. Um, but as I've always, I've always been a drummer. Always wanted to play drums in a band, and uh, you know, uh, we fit like a great glove. You don't say that at two o'clock in the morning when you're loading out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're cursing them out. That's <laughs> fine. I'm yelling and screaming. Yeah, it's so funny that the drums are so much heavier at the end of the night than they are at the beginning. Yeah, tell me about it. But uh, yeah, but that's it. That's, that's good. I learned some stuff there. Okay, Scott, why don't you tell us about yourself? You you were in uh, Point Pleasant. Yeah, born and raised here in Point Pleasant, and. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's it's kind of funny because uh, musical influences had a couple. Um, uh, I really started listening to a lot of music as a young child because I was fortunate enough. My best friend growing up uh, had a brother who was ten years older than him and a sister who was eight years older than him. So when they were seniors and sophomores in high school, we were seven years old, and I remember them bringing home. Uh, his brother bringing home Zeppelin albums, Zeppelin II, Zeppelin III, uh, uh, Zeppelin uh, Zoso, and uh, playing us this stuff. And when I was a seven-year-old, I'm like glued to the listening to mm. a whole lot of love and listening to, you know, when the levee breaks and things like that. And then uh, his sister would come home, and she was two years younger, uh, but completely into different music. And she would put on... Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, wow. and Yes albums, wow. and King Crimson, and face. crazy, you know, progressive stuff that, okay. you know, I'd never, you know, well, my I'm other friends had, a girl. I'm surprised a girl would play yeah, that. Yeah, you know, and my other friends had Partridge Family albums, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, and I had them too, but then I really got into all these other things too, right. and... You know, I, I wasn't playing an instrument or anything at the time, but I always had a love for music. I, I Every holiday, every birthday, always getting an album, getting this, getting that, uh, getting a rec record player. Um, and then musically, um, you know, I was very interested in my grandfather, of all people, my, my father's father, uh, played piano when we were kids. And, um, you know family functions, whatever, he would just twiddle away on the piano and he sounded great. And uh, and then as I got older and got interested in music and I started playing guitar when I was around 12, um, I started realizing that, no, you know, Pop didn't just kind of twiddle around on the piano. He actually used to play in some really big, big bands back in the 20s and uh, early 30s uh, up and down the east coast and in of new jersey wow. um every time every time i would see an episode of boardwalk empire it would remind me of my grandfather because he was the guy playing saxophone playing piano in those big bands wow playing in the casinos playing all the all those different places so that really is what kind of really got me interested in that's when you can make music. money you can make money to, oh yeah you well, back then, well you know what it was funny because back then in the 20s you were probably getting paid the same thing that we you are now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you hear that, bar owner? <laughs> the only difference is a hundred dollars went a lot farther yeah, back in yeah. 1920 than it does now. So, but uh, yeah. So, long story short, I mean, uh, I found out over the years. You know, I had some really deep musical roots. My my father really didn't play. He played uh, ukulele, uh, and he would just play it for fun at parties and stuff like that. And, um, but uh, I realized that my grandfather was actually quite the musician back in the day. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, but you didn't play bass first. That no, no, I started with guitar, and yeah. uh, you know, going to church and such, and seeing the guys playing the guitar up there. That's what Folk really guitar. got me wanting to play acoustic. And and then um, you know, some years later, my Did buddy was say, say Martha's. Yeah, same Martha's. So yep. you remember uh, Joe Saint? Yep, that guy. Who's, yep. who's just did a, yeah. And uh, so my, my same friend, uh, Chris, who, uh, who had the older brother and sister, uh, he played drums, so he was always my drummer. I played guitar, and we got introduced to a guy. We were seniors in high school, and we were introduced to a, a friend uh, through another friend who also played guitar. So we sat, well, yeah, let's all jam, and we went and started jamming, and my jaw was hanging out 
like on the floor. I couldn't believe how good this kid was on guitar. And he was two years behind me in school. He was he was a sophomore. And I was convinced after playing for 20 minutes that he, you know, basically started playing guitar when he was two years old. Right. And, you know, it was just a savant. Yeah. And um, after we got done, we're just hanging out and we get talking. And I asked him how long he'd been playing. And he'd been playing guitar for about a year. <laughs> and I'd been playing for five years at the time. Yeah. <laughs> and I immediately said, we're starting a band right now with my buddy Chris. And I'm going to switch the bass because uh, it was all progressive stuff that I loved. The Rush, Yes, Police. Wow. Some great stuff we used to play. And, uh, you know, uh, I still say to this day he was one of the most talented musicians I've ever played with. And I think history is borne it out because that same young guy who blew my doors off when I was 17, he was 15, uh, turned out to be Rob DeLeo from Stone Temple Pilots. He, oh, he now man. plays... He now plays bass for them, but he was a hell of a guitar player also. And that's because when his brother, when he saw his brother playing guitar, he was like, well, I guess it, 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 all, it all started coming together because I uh, realized that, you know, his brother was such a good guitarist and I didn't even know his brother right. you know, because he was older than us both also. So Yeah, we played against just, him in a battle little band. Yeah, and, it's, just, it, it's just funny how it goes sometimes. But yeah, so that's my story. Yeah. So and, and ever since I made the switch to bass, I just, you know what, I, I grew to... Uh, you know, I took to it right away because being a guitar player and being a bass player, there are some similarities, but I always loved um, carrying the, you know, cool beat. carrying the groove, yep. you know, carrying, making, making the band move along with the drummer. Um, you know, I've just always enjoyed doing that. So that's why. I'm, yeah, you yeah. can you can actually conduct the band from there. Yeah, you can you can yep. you can do it. So things like that. That's great. How many band? How many like other bands have you been in that were like? Well, uh, and do we? Because I know you. Scott writes original music. Yeah. But do you? Did you have any cover bands that were around in the? Yeah, I, I, back in in college, you know, I had a cover band that we played, you know, locally and such, and it did all right for a number What's of that years. Band? Uh, that was a band called Almost Blonde. Almost Blonde. Almost Blonde, um, and. Uh, you know, and then eventually we just broke up. You know, I wasn't going anywhere. And then, you know, I mean, I started having a family young. You know, I was in my early 20s when my when my son was born. And I decided, hey, I really don't have time for all this. Right. And I ended up taking almost 18 years off from music. I That'll mean, yep. I, you know... I think we all talk to that point about... When yeah, kids, and, you, you know, it. now when I look back on it, I'm glad I had the kids. You know, we had the kids, my wife and I, when when we were younger, because now we're able to kind of enjoy life and do the different things that a lot of people, you know, that still have a ten year old at home and such, yeah, you know, can't do. Right. So that's true. Yeah. So I guess it's my turn here. Um, I started playing back in sixth grade with a. Uh, I started learning from a music teacher who was, I guess, in Point Pleasant, Miss Mason. She had a little place around here where she built these little guitars that were like they were like solid body Telecasters that she built, put necks on them, and you'd rent the guitar. But my dad had an acoustic guitar, and um, I tried learning on that. And he said, "If you ever learn how to play all these songs here just by me calling something out, I'll you know buy you a good guitar." Well, I did that, and he never did. So I was like, <laughs> oh, but, you know, he faked me out with that. But like you, my grandmother and you, my grandmother played uh, piano, but it was parlor piano. Yeah. And she had a horrible voice. And we would go up there and she would sing Patsy Cline songs at the top of her lungs. Like Edith Bunker? Oh, worse. It was worse. It was so bad. God bless her. I love her very much. And she... But that was where I, 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 when I used to go up there to visit her in Boston, I would sit and play the piano Aww. just by hitting the, hitting the, yeah. you know, the Bobby, it's Bobby. Ooh. Bobby, stop playing it, but it, it would spread out my, you know, it, it was just interesting. And then my cousin turned me on to the Beatles, but I was more into pop music. So like you, you know, Par Partridge Family. Yeah. All those guys. Three Dog Night. Three Dog Night. Anything was on pop radio. The stuff we play with Bad Dog. Oh, yeah. Brandy. All these songs were like yeah. on the radio in the car when I was a kid. I sometimes feel like I'm listening to the AM radio in my in the fishing boat when mm -hmm. I was 
10 yeah. years old. Exactly, yeah. You know, when we do some bad dog songs, because it sounds like Wolfman Jack's about to come on any moment. <laughs> you're, you're right. <laughs> you know? and, that, and that's what I like about bad dog. Yeah. It's, it's the fun stuff that we get to play. But that's where um, I, I was mostly focused. And then Wings came out. And uh, I started listening to a lot of Paul McCartney. But um, the first band I was ever in was with Gene Marshall from Bad Dog. And we had a band that, you know, was called uh, Jet Black, J-E-T-T-B-L-A-C-K. That's much heavier, two uh, T's. And <laughs> the, um, the first gig we had was at the Brick Hospital Fair in Bricktown. And we were playing there, and Gene's, there's a couple of stories of this thing, right? So <laughs> it was really hot. We didn't have a PA system. <laughs> And the, uh, the people there that, that were booking us from the hospital said, do you have a band? Yes, we do. Oh, okay, but I said, we do not have a PA system. He goes, well, we have a public address system. Now I'm freshman in high school. I'm like, public, it's PA, right? That's what it stands for. <laughs> but a public address system is just a little loudspeaker, yeah. and they're all over the whole park. And it's really for, like, um, there's a Ford with the lights on, <laughs> you know, that kind of a public address system. <laughs> It was realistic, you know, Radio Shack, yeah. four little knobs, and all it was is to tell people that their lights are on or to, a raffle or something, you know. Yeah. So we get there, we set up, we play, and the first organ that uh, his brother Chip had, had the, you could slide it to change the um, pitch. Yeah. And in the center it was 440E. Yeah, standard tune. But if he hit, he hit it with his knee, <laughs> and just a little, and it knocked it out of tune. Now, us not knowing, we're thinking we're out of tune, and it's the humidity. So we start playing with our tuning, and now we're all out of tune. Then he finds that, oh, it's wrong, puts it back. Now we're all out of tune, and everything has gone crazy, right? Wait, hold on. This was Gene on the keyboards? No, this was his brother, Chip. Oh, okay. Gene, Gene played bass originally. <laughs> That's right, I forgot. So, so we're all like getting that as three guitars, a bass, keyboards, and drums, and we're all messing up. And the next band coming after us is the Wanderers, who was a big band down here. They were like, they were the real band, you know. And they were coming up after us. And they're sitting in the front row looking at us with their arms crossed. <laughs> and we're just blowing it, you know. Like, we, we did great the first half, and then the second half went bad. You didn't think they asked to use their PA, huh? Well, well they, they, we didn't know who was going to be there. How are we going to know, you know? So we, um, we ended up, uh, my cousin Tom is standing there. Now, his mother goes out to have a cigarette out of the thing and she hears it now it's a public address system that we're just the voices are just coming out <laughs> there's no music just the voices and we're all talking and uh, I'm like Gene go what is going on and Gene's like I don't know man everything's getting messed up it must be the humidity and my cousin Tom sees my aunt yelling Thomas Thomas come here and he goes I gotta go home I'm like what do you mean we gotta go home it's a middle of the gig what you? and it's going out over the whole thing and she's like because she doesn't want us to keep talking. And Gene's like, this sucks. I can't believe it. It's going out over the whole thing. Right? So that was my first time playing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so then we, we um, you know, I played in several bands. I did. A, I was in a wedding band. Played bass in a wedding band. Um, and then I stopped playing in about 90, 90 to 90, maybe 93, I think, 93 to 2005. I gave it up because of kids. You know, you got to raise kids. Right. Well, when I met you, you were playing in a um, Neil Young cover band. Well, I, I just, we, yeah, not a cover band, but it was, <laughs> yeah. there, a good Trivia. friend of ours has, has a voice that sounds exactly yeah. like Neil Young. Neil Young. Yeah. And yeah, I was playing a lot of Neil Young at that point. But my dad got sick and I had to get out of that band. Yeah. So um, then that was unfortunate because... Then my dad passed away, and we we'll make a long story short, with a aloha monkey. Well, and that's pretty much a story to three of us, I guess. Anybody else got anything to add? Well, just one, one funny story, if I can, that's going to live in infamy. Uh, you, you just mentioned your dad. And uh, I used to love it when he used to come see us play at the Wall Street <laughs> pub. Okay. And uh, of course, there was always the, the tambourine that was laying on the front table. Oh, yeah. For someone to pick up and, and jam along with us. And, um, and, and, you know, for all, for all you musicians out there, you know, when, I'm going to give you a little clap here. So when you have a one, two, three, four, and you're playing a four beat uh, rock tune and you're jamming away, and all of a sudden you hear the tambourine going on the one and the three, it kind of throws you off a little bit. Yeah, especially my wife, Jen, <laughs> sitting right next to him. She would have had to put her hand on his head and stop, stop. But he was 
expert. I mean, it's actually very difficult to play. To do on a one and a one three. three. <laughs> and it takes yeah. a special talent. It really does. But I, I just want to give a shoot, shout out to that. Yeah. And, you know, your dad was a really nice guy. Yeah, yeah thanks. So. Up in heaven. He's, uh, he's banging he's on, on the one and three. three. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Jesus, he's in hell. Jesus needs <laughs> someone on the one and the three. He may be in hell, like making everybody's life miserable down there, all the musicians. He's going to see everybody. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, word to the wise, you better be good, you musicians out there, or you That's might right. be Mr. Coon on the one and the and three the one in the future. Three. That's so, right. Yeah, that was great. So that's the end of the, that's uh, the end of the first official Aloha Monkey Shortcast podcast. Aloha, Aloha. That was fun. It was. I enjoyed it. I'm, I hope yeah. all the listeners enjoyed it because we had a good laugh here, and I, I learned some stuff too. You know, we'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah. But now we'd like to uh, let you know about where we're going to be this weekend because uh, this, this I'm hoping this podcast to be out on Thursday and the end of August yeah. for the Labor Day weekend mm -hmm. festivities, and Adam's going to tell us where we're going to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, as I mentioned during the podcast, uh, we all play in various bands. We have a Lower Monkey, we have a Bad Dog, and we also have a trio, an acoustic trio called Aces and Eights Trio. Uh, that's with Bill Healy of um, um, On the Rocks. On the Rocks. They'll be here too. So, anyway, Saturday, August thirty first, nine nine thirty p.m. at the Windward Tavern in Brick is where we'll play uh, Aces and Eights Trio. Are we doing that acoustic or is it like full electric? No, that's an acoustic. Okay, two, good. Two uh, acoustic guitars and a cajon. Um, and then the next day on Sunday, September 1st, we have a double header. We have an afternoon bonanza. It's actually the last uh, Sunday gig at Beacon 70 from 3 p.m. till 6 p.m. And then followed by that in the evening over to our beautiful place at Marlins from 9 p.m. till midnight or 12.30. Uh, we're rocking the night away. So that's all we have planned for that weekend. And uh, hopefully everybody can come out and, and join us. Right. The Beacon 70 is the last uh, last show they're going to have on a Sunday because football season starts. That's right. So, and, and it's such a great place to see a band play there. It's, it's, it's nice. They got the windows open. We're right on the water. It's great. Are, are, aren't, isn't the owner supposed to be playing with us at the Beacon 70? Is he bringing his guitar or something that night? I don't know, but we can certainly... He, didn't him. he say he wanted to do that? Joey wants to do some reggae with us, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, so we got to remind him. We have to remind him. Right. Absolutely. And we, this podcast, we also want to have some of the uh, owners and bartenders from the places we play at to come on and tell us about you know their stories, too. So, um, and like I said, if you need anything from us, or if you want to have a question, we'll be answering questions from info at alohamonkeyband.com. Or is it Gmail? No, it's an info at Aloha Monkey info Band. Info at Aloha you, Monkey you, Band. You know, the problem is when you when you play in so many bands, it's, and you, yeah, you get confused. confused. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's uh, that's what's going on with us, and let us know where you're playing, and and we do support our other friends that are out there playing. That's right. So we'll come and see you play, and then you come on our podcast. Um, why don't we talk about our next podcast that's going to be coming up? Oh, yeah. Which is uh, Paul Marzano on the 21st of September at Marlins. We are actually having a live CD drop for Paul Marzano. And Scott, what was the name of his, uh, his new CD? Yeah. It's called Mood Swing Serenade. Mood, That's right. Yeah, Mood Swing Serenade. You can catch it on iTunes, yep. Spotify, Amazon, Apple Music. I have it on Spotify. And he'll be uh, selling the CDs there and uh, autographing them. Yeah, so how we have it, we, we have the gig booked, um, Aloha Monkey's playing at Marlins on the 21st, and uh, we're going to dedicate our second set to Paul's music, and we're actually backing him. We are his yeah. backing band, uh, and it's going to be... Paul Marzano and Aloha Monkey. Yeah, and I believe... Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a couple of other musicians in G there, too. Right? G Marshall's yeah. going to be yeah. uh, sitting in on keyboards. From Bad Dog, from that's Bad right. Dog. And a couple of other uh, great musicians. So yeah, we'll have Bad Dog here also. Yep, yeah, I'll do that. So, Marky Calendars. Um, so, uh, so, let's just recap here. Um, the uh, end of summer, Labor Day weekend, uh, August 31st, uh, uh, you've got Aces and Ace Trio at Winwood Tavern. You've got Aloha Monkey doing a double header 
at uh, Beacon 7 and at Marlins. And then on the 21st of September, Paul Marzano and Aloha Monkey at Marlins. It's going to be a fantastic time. And we'll get Paul in for the next um, uh, podcast before that gig. So we can right. learn. He's a phenomenal musician. We'll learn a little Great bit more voice, about too. Him. You know, I really enjoy it. I really enjoy yeah. his voice. He is. Especially listening on, on, the, on the CD. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I, I like listening when I hear when I hear him play, but well, when he plays it really live, good. he's hitting everything. It's not like it's been doctored up on the oh, scene no. or anything. Yeah. It's, he's, he's got a great voice. So that's it. That's uh, that's it. That's enough. We'd like to thank our sponsor, No Knot Necklace Carrier. Yes, look absolutely. for them at No Knot de- Necklace Carrier dot com. They're in all your favorite stores, Walmart, Amazon, and um, listen for their commercial coming right up after this. Thanks, everybody. Aloha. Are you tired of ruining your necklaces with knots and kinks? The No Knot Necklace Carrier lets you travel and store your jewelry with confidence. The patented design allows you to bring multiple necklaces and accessories with you in one convenient carry-all. The padded carrier safeguards your valuables and keeps them tangle-free. It's so easy to use. Choose which opening will keep your necklace the most taut. Slide your necklace through the opening, reclasp, and repeat. The No Knot Necklace Carrier also has pockets for your other valuables and room for your larger jewelry. Choose one of the stylish designs to take on all of your travels. It's even a great space-saving solution for your home. No Knot Necklace Carrier. Keeping your jewelry tangle-free and ready to wear.